Hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Jeannie Vaden. I'm here um, per many requests to show a little bit about how I achieve uh, the results that I do with my watercolors. Um, here I have a painting that's already um, pretty, you know, maybe three quarters uh, of the way done. It's very close to being done, probably even further than that. And um, I wanted to show you some of my layering techniques. Um, and I thought this would be a good one to demo on this today. I'm going to be using a Robert Simmons White Sable. This is a number 10 brush. I hope you can see that. And um, I'm using three colors. I'm using Permanent Rose, Windsor Blue Green Shade, and Windsor Yellow. And that's very common for, um, for me to use, as uh, some of you know. Um, but if you haven't seen or uh, had a workshop with me or seen me paint before, um, I love using a very limited palette. I, uh, I love using many layers of color and um, just cha changing between those three colors really works well for me. So I'm going to just add a little bit to the center of this rose. Got a little Kleenex in my hand. I'm going and I've dampened my um, my paper just right up to this area. Okay, so a little bit of permanent rose on my brush. And I'm going to start right up here and just float a bit of color in. And what I want to do is just slightly, slightly deepen the color toward this back center part of my flower. And that will help um, this forward part come out and just set that back in just a little bit. Got some uh, Windsor Yellow on my brush now and I'm going to drop that right into the center here. And I'll let that float out and then uh, just a very light bit of Windsor Blue Green Shade. And I'm going to push that I think back up in here a little bit. See, it's just very, very light. The Windsor Blue Green Shade is a pretty powerful blue, um, so you want to be careful when you use it. But it's so beautiful um, and um, used in the in the right way. It's uh, it's just lovely. I've got permanent rose on my brush again and drop it back over where I dropped that Windsor blue green shade and that'll go into a violet color when those two are mixed together. The um, permanent rose and Windsor yellow make a nice um, warm peachy orange color. Drop a little bit more in there and maybe touch right back in here. Okay, now I'm gonna take my brush. It's just, I've just washed my brush off and then I'm going to take most of the moisture out of it. And then I'm going to come back into those areas where I just dropped the color and I'm going to do a little bit of lifting out of some of that pigment while it's still, while the paper is still damp. And that's going to help me grab back some of my lights 
and define some of the shapes within my flower. Just run that brush over. Here I'd like to grab some light back out right down in here. I'm using a photo reference, this photo reference. Uh, and so um, oftentimes I, I work from a photo. Sometimes I um, um, I make things up, you know, but a lot of times I have something to look at and um, this this photo was taken by me many many years ago um, I think it was at um, Capitol Park in Sacramento, California I got some, they have a, a beautiful rose garden there and I've gotten some wonderful photos over the years using their roses. There we go. Okay, so just manipulating that color a little bit and the values, taking, bringing some uh, lighter spots into that and then I'm going to let it dry now with watercolors you may or may not know that watercolors dry lighter um, it's like acrylics I believe dry darker so they they'll um, slightly darken as they dry but watercolors will um, lighten up and so that's one of the tricks in painting in watercolor is to kind of judge how dark your end result is going to be. There we go. All right, I'm going to let that dry. Thanks for watching. I'll be back.